You're watching NRA TV with Bill Whittle. Hi, everybody. Live from Los Angeles, California, I'm Bill Whittle, and this is the Hot Mike Show. Hot Mike can't be with us today. He, uh, last night, he got a chance to meet up with his old high school sweetheart who he hadn't seen in a long time, and uh, apparently they spent the night together. So Mike is in the hospital with a case of uh, acute cooties, and uh, we are all praying for a speedy recovery, as I know you are at home. Uh, today, we want to talk about how much Hollywood loves Donald Trump, and it's true. I'm not just saying that underground Hollywood, obviously, but the conservatives in Hollywood, those scattered few of us out here, are in love with the man and for a number of reasons, which we'll get to in, in just a moment. The uh, run-of-the-mill Hollywood celebrity, just over the hill back there, however, is not only appalled at Donald Trump, they are, and they're not only appalled at the fact that half of the country voted for Donald Trump, they are unable to understand why the rest of the country voted for Donald Trump. They cannot process it. It's too much cognitive dissonance for them. They simply can't deal with it. I'll give you an example. Just watch, this is just a very small clip of a much longer clip. Watch this panel discussion where the reporter is asking people if they st still supported Donald Trump. Watch, just watch her reaction. I'm just trying works. to understand the, the consistency of it's bad when President Obama does it, it's good when President Trump no, does it. It's no, only good to say that. We have generals, we have military experts, we have to trust what And I'm just trying to understand the, the consistency of it's bad when President Obama does it, it's good when President Trump no, does it. It's no, only good to say that. Saying. We have generals, we have military experts, we have to trust what they say. They know what and they're telling us about it. They're advising saying. our president, right way. we're behind all of Okay, North Korea. Um, <laughs> how, how, go ahead. Tell I'm just disorders. trying to understand the, the consistency of it's bad when President Obama does it, it's good when President Trump no, does it. It's no, only good to say that. We have generals, we have military experts, we have to trust what they say. They know what and they're telling us about it. They're advising our president, right way. we're behind all of them. Okay, North Korea. Um, <laughs> how, go ahead. Tell She's laughing. She was laughing at her. You really need to see the whole thing to get it. And sorry about that little technical mix up there. Uh, it's actually a space age miracle that we're coming to you from different places at the same time. Uh, so the liberal elites can't process it. They can't, they simply can't believe it, especially when you see uh, uh, black people or, or Hispanics or gay people for Trump. They simply, the smoke comes out of their ears. But I think my favorite moment of the, uh, of the entire time since Donald Trump was elected occurred during the Golden Globes, and let me just set this up for you. Meryl Streep was going up to win an award again, and you really need to have worked in show business for a little while. I was an editor for many years, 10 years out here in Los Angeles. You really need to be in the machine to know what happens during what we call kudos season out here. There are something like 20 or 25 different award celebrations where these people simply vote themselves award and they all get dressed up and go down to this swanky place and watch each other accept these trophies tearfully. I got over that a long time ago. I think it's just really, really, really too much. But as I said, my favorite moment since Donald Trump was uh, elected occurred at the Golden Globe ceremony. And I'd like you to take a look at, um, at uh, perennial winner Meryl Streep because there's something really interesting going on here. So let's see if we can roll that. Um, thank you, Hollywood Foreign Press. Just to pick up on what Hugh Laurie said, you and all of us in this room really belong to the most vilified segments in American society right now. Think about it. Hollywood, foreigners, and the press. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, that makes my day. Uh, you know why I find that so interesting and so amusing? I'll tell you why. Meryl Streep is a fine actress, and she's one of the best actresses that ever lived, but I don't think she was acting there. I think she was genuinely choked up. In fact, I know she was genu genuinely choked up. And the reason that she was genuinely choked up is because she's not used to being one of the most vilified people in America. She's used to being one of the most loved people in America. So the idea that a Hollywood celebrity, no less, a Hollywood celebrity might be unpopular because of them trying to foist their policies on the rest of the American people and treating us like a bunch of, you know, cave dwellers is starting to finally just get to the point where it ticks us off a little bit. Meryl Streep was almost speechless with a combination of disbelief and shame. Not an amazing thing to see. Oh, I thought that was quite refreshing. And here's the sticker. This was why this is why the left goes absolutely nuts over Donald Trump because after that speech, um, Merrill uh, made a few um, few more pointed remarks towards the president and any other president in history, certainly any other Republican president, would have simply ignored it, but not this one. Here's what he tweeted back. Meryl Streep, one of the most overrated actresses in Hollywood, doesn't know me, attacked me last night at the Golden Globes, and she is a, what is it, a, he went on to call her a loser and uh, overrated, and all the rest of this stuff. Loser, overrated, friend of Hillary. That's what he put in, into the tweet there. And they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. And I'm just loving it. I absolutely am uh, absolutely loving it. I'll just give you one more example um, of something, uh, of a little graphic that showed up, uh, showed up today as we record this. And it is, again, the kind of thing that makes left-wing elitists go nuts. Here it is. The best eclipse ever. I think Donald Trump himself tweeted that out. Now, I find that hilarious. I find it actually to be just good, clever, kind of fun, and so on. But the left is, is out of their minds. They're out of their minds because Donald Trump is not ashamed of being Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not ashamed of it. He's not ashamed of being Donald Trump. He's not ashamed of it. They can't understand that because they're so ashamed of him. So Hollywood does, in fact, have this horrendous um, aversion to Donald Trump, but not everybody, because there are, in fact, some conservatives in Hollywood, and I happen to be one of them, and there are a few others. So um, why don't we... Uh, why don't we bring in our guest, a, a friend of ours, uh, certainly a big friend of freedom and friend of the NRA, Chuck Holton, who knows a little bit about all this, um, having been involved on the on the edges of Hollywood as a, as a writer and so on. Chuck, good to see you again. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, Bill. It's good to see you. You know, it's kind of hard to take this stuff seriously, going the places that I go, uh, uh, you know, spending a lot of time in war zones and, and disaster areas around the world. You know, these are such first world problems. And, you know, I think what it what it really illustrates to me is something I've been talking about for a long time, and that is that here in the United States, we don't have one country anymore. We have two countries. We have two countries that, that hold to two vastly different worldviews, and those worldviews are mutually exclusive. They are completely incompatible. And the, the longer we go on, the more we are starting to see just how incompatible they are. Now, I've spent a lot of time That's a uh, talking. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's exactly right. Uh, it's It's been going on for a while. Back in 2005, I wrote an essay called Tribes, where I said basically the country is now divided into two tribes. There's the pink tribe, which is all the emotional people and the uh, show business folks and so on. And there's the, the gray tribe, which is the all practical people like engineers and soldiers and so on. Uh, you know, Chuck, here's the thing. Um, I was uh, pretty active with a group of conservatives out here uh, during the last days of the Bush presidency. And I was wondering if you could comment on this for us. We had a number of cases where people who were conservatives in Hollywood, this is again during the Bush presidency in the middle of it, would say that they would be in a makeup trailer or on set or something, and some actor would come in and they'd start talking about the war for oil and the Halliburton death machine and how our soldiers are just a bunch of rednecks and hicks who couldn't find a job and, and how we're all psychopaths and mass murderers over there killing these innocent Iraqis. And people had to look at their feet, they had to look at their shoes. We even had we even had soldiers who were who were out of combat, retired from the service, trying to get a career as actors in Hollywood and had to portray themselves as psychopaths and murderers. And they had a choice, Chuck, they had to either swallow it or not work in that business again. 
Yeah, and I think you're seeing more and more of that, Bill. Uh, again, it just illustrates that divide between the two worldviews. And it, it proves that they are not compatible. They are not. You, it, it's very difficult for us to live in the same country with these people because their worldview is absolutely hostile, toxic to conservatism. And ours is to theirs. And I think if you boil it down, Bill, what it comes down to is that they really believe that there is no such thing as objective truth. Like you cannot say that this is right and this is wrong, no matter what you think about it. You know, certain things are, are right and certain things are wrong. To them, everything's opinion. And that's one of the reasons they get so angry when we talk about the clenched fist of truth, because they, they don't have a clenched fist of truth. They have a clenched fist of opinion. And, and when we talk about we're going to beat you with the clenched fist of truth, they, they get very offended. Very, they, they don't even understand that because the concept of truth to them is something that's completely foreign. But, uh, you know, what we're seeing is that any place where they have some power, wh whether it's the, the media, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's government, the deep state, that sort of thing, any place they have some power, they are going to use that power to punish, and they've actually come out and said this. There's been several liberals who have said, we're about punishing those who are not righteous, you know? And uh, so they're gonna use their power to punish conservatives in every way possible. So you see this in Hollywood, you see it in government. There's so many times where you, you just cannot say, if you wanna keep your job, you cannot say what is actually true and what is right because you, you'd get absolutely run out of town. There are a lot of places we're seeing even recently where you can't stand in the city square and proclaim the truth. You can't mm -hmm. stand in the city square and, and speak out against the violence of the left because you will be attacked. You will be assaulted physically. And uh, I think, unfortunately, we're just going to see more and more of this uh, because these two, uh, these two countries that live here in America are really not going to be reconciled unless we can find some way to stop that. Uh, you know, because the, the left's arguments, this, this whole argument of uh, white privilege, for example, is just, it's not an argument. It's just a way of shutting down an argument. It's a way of shutting down the, the dis discourse in the, in the marketplace of ideas. What you say doesn't matter because you're a white male. Okay, so you can't even you don't even get to come to the table with your opinion, with your with with your version of truth, what you believe to be true, because you're you're a cis white male. So forget it. You just step aside and shut up. Uh, that's what that's what the whole white privilege ar argument is about. And, uh, you know, these these uh, there are organizations out there that we see coming after us like Media Matters and those jokers. Uh, they're absolutely paid by these wealthy people on the left. They, they re receive a paycheck to follow us around and to try to poke holes in every single thing you and I say. And, uh, you know, what a what a horrible way to make a living. If you think about it, yeah, uh, what, what a horrible way to, to, to ab absolutely yeah. try to put food on the table by, by just doing nothing but tearing people down. That's an absolutely horrible thing. Chuck, it absolutely is. Let me, um, let me tell you a true story. Uh, and I certainly want to tell this uh, true story to, to our audience. You mentioned the big divide, the sort of the moral and ethical philosophical divide between these two Americas. And I think this is one of my favorite stories because I think it so clearly illustrates how completely different the moral code is of most of the people that make our, our, our movies and our entertainment. So here's the true story. They made a movie in 2007 called The Kingdom, and it was about a group of Americans who are um, uh, American soldiers who go to Saudi Arabia to find the terrorist perpetrators of a bombing of a barracks and so on that killed American citizens. Mm -hmm. And the director right. of this film was, was a foreigner. And basically what he did in The Kingdom was he presented a very nuanced and very fair and balanced look at the position of the terrorists. And at the end of the movie, now this is where it gets great, at the end of the movie, the American soldiers burst into the room where all these terrorists are, who we see are real people just like us. And they begin opening fire and killing all of them. And he showed this to a test audience. And when he showed the, the American soldiers bursting in and shooting these terrorists, the room erupted into applause and cheers and the director was mortified. He really was. He almost stood up and said, no, no, no. You're not supposed to applaud at this. This is a horrible misunderstanding. This is the entire tragedy. The idea that a guy could make a movie about terrorists 
and have American people react to American soldiers killing terrorists as if it was some kind of a debatable crime? I mean, my God, man, what else do you need to know about the philosophy of the people that make movies out there? Well, what it shows is that they agree in some sense with the terrorists in that they hate the concept of America. They hate the liberties that we have. They, uh, you know, they, they absolutely hate the American military and they don't see them as heroes. Um, but also you have to understand, Bill, I mean, I, I almost can't watch these kind of movies anymore because uh, they they almost never get it right. One of the things they just don't show is all the the, the time that, that our, our troops spend uh, facing their mortality on a daily basis, uh, spending time lonely away from their families in very Spartan and miserable conditions. I'll just, let me tell you a story. Uh, in 2008, I went to Afghanistan for the first time and I spent uh, about a month there and we went out with the, uh, with the Marines in Helmand province uh, down in the South. And we, we, we went out to a place called, uh, uh, it was a combat outpost in, in south of Lashkagar. It took us about 16 hours to get there. That's riding in the back of a, of a seven ton truck that's open to the sun. It was about 116 degrees. This moon dust was just coating everything, all our gear, our faces, our, I mean, everything. You're just completely covered with this dust. And but it, it actually rained a little bit on the way out there. It was literally raining mud uh, at one point. It's the only time I've ever seen that in my whole life. We get out to this combat outpost. These Marines have been out there for seven months. They have not had so much as a shower in seven months. They haven't had hot meals. They haven't had a, they, they don't have a tent to sleep in. They're sleeping on the ground for seven months. In 100, it, at night, it gets down to 100, 111, you know, balmy degrees, right? Uh, I mean, it is absolutely horrible, miserable, and not to mention the fact that there are people trying to kill them every day. And while we were there, several several guys lost limbs to IEDs and that sort of thing. While we were there, uh, there was a congressman, um, uh, uh, and I'm, her name escapes me now, a black congressman from uh, from the Houston area. And uh, she, she showed up in Afghanistan to visit the troops. Well, she spent about uh, 48 hours in Kabul at uh, in you know what would be called the green zone, you know, in the, the safe area, uh, hobnobbing with generals and and that sort of thing, and posting pictures on her Facebook page, you know, out visiting the troops in Afghanistan, and you know, trying to use it as a political uh, you know uh, a bonus for her for her career, right? And I, it just made me so sick because here she was, she didn't go visit any troops, she visited the generals. And I, I posted a picture of myself getting off that seven ton truck completely covered with dust and said, this is what it looks like when you visit the troops. But what you're seeing is that those mm -hmm. same people are the ones who are trying to punish those, uh, again, those people, especially uh, those of us who believe differently than she does when it comes to politics and trying to shut down the debate. They don't want to have the debate over what's true, what's fair, what's right, what's just. They just want to shut down the debate. And they want to do it by attacking and demeaning us. And that you see that that every time they start name calling, they start. I mean, they they shout racist, they shout homophobe, they shout bigot. Those are code words for don't listen to this person's ideas, don't listen to this person's opinion because they don't matter. So every time you hear that, you should it, you, it should set a little red light off in your head. They're not. They're not trying to win the debate. They're just trying to shut down the debate. Yeah, that's exactly right. Chuck Holton, ladies and gentlemen, a big friend of ours here at NRA TV. Chuck, thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure getting your take on this because you've dealt with these people as much as I have. When we come back after a quick break, we're going to be looking at some quotes from actual conservatives in Hollywood talking about what it's like to live out here under the big giant red eye of Mordor. I'm Bill Whittle. This is the Hot Mike Show, and we'll be right back on NRA TV.